<laughs> we're just having a little break here, a little conversation, a little huddle. Yeah. Right? Yeah, trying to make sure we're, we're <laughs> get the PG-13. Sorry, yeah. The, the guys working. Yeah, it's a rowdy Friday, TJF here in the TFP. <laughs> we're a little tired this week, kind of delirious, as some of these football guys may be too. Yeah, it's been a long week, so it's uh, the weekend is not going to get here soon enough. Yes. Long, so. so, sports editor here, nice to take a little breather with me for a fun little conversation, Stephen Hargis. So your story today is nothing to laugh about. It's no, really, no. really powerful and serious about a kid I haven't had the pleasure to meet, but you certainly have interviewed, Sequatchie County lineman John Higgins. Sounds like such a sweet kid who has been through more in his short lifetime than most people ever will. Let's let's talk about this kid. He's so sweet. Yeah, I mean, just a really great kid. I mean, he's a uh, you know, big... Uh, 5'11", 245 pounds with a grown man's beard. I mean, so he looks much older than 17. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you get to, I mean, the first thing you notice about him when, when we sat down to talk was, um, A, how mature he was, and B, just the, the easy smile that he's got. I mean, he's such a good kid. I mean, he's just always was, was upbeat and positive uh, throughout the, the interview. Uh, and, and even in talking with, you know, with us about some of the things he had been through as far been as through. his mom's dealt with, with drug addiction uh, for as far back as he could remember. He actually had walked in a couple of times uh, when she had OD'd, uh, once she tried to commit suicide, and she's currently in jail uh, in Sequatchie County on a uh, you know, parole violation from some, some previous drug-related charges. So, I mean, he just went through a lot. Saw uh, a lot. Kind of seeing that. Uh, you know, growing up seeing that and really all he ever, you know, the thing that was heartbreaking was when he said all he really wanted, uh, ever wanted was a family. Just to be normal, just, you know, to pick him up from practice and, you know, go home and eat dinner and talk about his day and that kind of thing. Like um, all kids. Yeah, like all kids. And so, you know, fortunately, you know, a, a miracle happens in, in this wonderful family. Uh, Tony and Lisa Cates, uh, Good he's, a, he's a pastor over in Dunlap and uh, she's worked uh, for seven years. She worked with the Department of Children's Services so she'd seen some things, uh, knew, knew kind of you know what he was dealing with and they took him in. He was a friend of, of their youngest sons or younger sons. They've, they've got one a little younger but one of their younger sons uh, played on the football team with him. Uh, they kind of took him in. He was just hanging out with their son for a little while and then they kind of realized the need that he had uh, without having much and so they, they took him in and he basically moved in with them. They became his legal guardians five years ago and uh, I mean it's really turned his life around now. He's got opportunities, uh, you know, he was a 397 GPA. He's got awesome. opportunities to go to, you know, Tennessee Tech is kind of where he's leaning to go right now because he wants to study electrical engineering and just has a really bright future uh, after going through, you know, a, a childhood that was just really hell on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great to hear. So Tony and Lisa Cates, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Sequatchie County, Dunlap. Mm -hmm. uh, so new family and he certainly He's doing well. Yeah, he's, he's doing, doing well. Very well. Is he doing well in the game? Doing too? very well in the game. He's a, he's a, rarely comes off the field. He starts on the offensive and defensive line. He's also there's long snapper on special teams. Uh, I mean, just to tell you how tough the kid is, he a couple of examples during the spring. He he took a helmet to the knee. It dislocated his kneecap. He had to have surgery to repair the ligaments. They told him you know you're probably not going to get to play this year. If you do, it'll be the last couple of games you might get in. He he doubled all of the rehab work that they gave him to do and was able to get back on the field by the season opener. He was a starting uh, two-way lineman in the season opener. A couple of weeks later, dislocates his shoulder in a game, doesn't even come off the field, asks a teammate to pull his arm to pop it back into socket so he doesn't have to come out of the game and just stays in there and continues to play. So, I mean, tough as nails kids, uh, kid emotionally uh, as well as physically, and, and he is, uh, Coach Adam Kane at Sequatchie said, you know, he is the, the heart and soul of their team. He's the guy that makes them go, and, uh, you know, they're doing really well. Best in program history right now. They're 5-0, and ranked number two in 3A. Uh, so they're doing really well, and uh, he's, he's a big reason for that. Definitely. Well, we're cheering for you, John Higgins and Sequatchie, and the family, the football team. It's a great story. You all are looking at it. It's a number one story on our website. And certainly pick up the paper, too. This is worth reading for, for anybody. It will really lift you up, and we're glad he's doing so well. So let's talk about some teams. We don't know who may be doing so well tonight. It's kind of a toss-up. Baylor, Macaulay. Now, y'all have seen the hype video. We, mm -hmm. went, we went to Macaulay, saw it. What did you think of it? Uh, I mean, it was creative once again. I mean, last year's, you know, blew everybody away this year. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to top what they did, but, I mean, they came back with another strong video this year again. These uh, kids are so funny. They really all good, really good, really good, really well done. 
Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, we're jealous of the quality here. Like, there's <laughs> drones that kids were using actually helping uh, shoot the video, so at least they learned something too. But these funny kids from Macaulay, young adults, I should say, excuse me, guys, uh, they showed up to the field all rowdy. They did the dance for us. Uh, That's really, just Macaulay kids being Yeah, like, rowdy. It's, it's I mean, Baylor, kids, Weeks, so Baylor Macaulay. Yeah, they were hilarious. And we have that for you too on our. Uh, social media and website and uh, uh, Tia, beautiful singer from GPS is part of their band, The Spirituals. So we have that leading up to the big game. But let's talk about the two teams, strengths, weaknesses, any predictions on how you see this this big hype actually going? Um, Macaulay has their work cut out for them. They, they last year, you know, they didn't so much live up to the hype video. Yeah. And Baylor went out there and really just physically manhandled them. I mean, beat them up pretty good to the point that Macaulay's made several changes just from what happened last year. They added Ricky Ross, who was the head football coach at, at uh, Marion County, took them to a couple state championships, added him as a defensive coordinator. Uh, they've done a lot of things during the summer just to get tougher, uh, per se. And, and, and really, that's that's probably where the game is going to be decided tonight is, is who's – Who's the more physical team up front? Both both teams have uh, very good playmakers. It's a, it's a college coach's dream. They can come in and sit and watch probably a dozen or more college recruits on on the, you know between the two teams on the field. Uh, you know Baylor's got a, a couple of kids who already have offers. Macaulay's got kids who are really close to getting offers. Robert Riddle is one of the top quarterbacks in the entire state at Macaulay. Uh, but it's probably, you know, it's going to be decided up front with those those guys. It's uh, a big night. Who's going to be more physical, and it's going to be a great, I mean, I think their stadium holds around 4,000. This Beautiful. has already sold well over 6,000 tickets. They're going to cut it off, be close to probably seven or 8,000 or so there. Somehow they'll get all those people in at, at Spears Stadium. Wow, and you're going to be there, right? Yes, I'll be there. Try to get there about an hour or so early so we make sure we get a parking spot and get on the field. Yeah, that's going to be a, that's going to be an It'll be a great exciting night. And it's, it's always one of the best ones of, of the whole year. I mean, just... The spirituals, like you, you talked about, Andrew, <laughs> the kids make it really a lot of fun because both sides, uh, so many of the kids, are, you know, the chants are going back and forth, and it's just uh, a lot of energy. It truly is like Friday night lights in those situations. These towns like Chattanooga or cities that have these huge football rivalries, it's a timeless thing. It never, yeah. oh, absolutely. never gets old yeah, to There are see. people who will come in uh, just this weekend, if it's the reunion weekend or whatever, McCauley, they're going to fly in just for the game to see you know old classmates and that kind of thing and then if they live out of town they'll, they'll fly back or whatever it's it's very much a college atmosphere you know there's tailgating before the game lots of that um, it's just a really neat atmosphere definitely and where are other sports uh, reporters tonight uh, we'll have guys uh, Red Bank and, and uh, Signal Mountain another you know, that's that's a big rivalry kind of growing there uh, We'll also have Chattanooga Christian and Howard covered. That's a big one. Uh, we'll have Lindsey Young, who's, who's down in North Georgia, covering Murray County and North Murray. Uh, we'll have nine games, actually, that we're going to be uh, staffing tonight. So we'll have coverage of uh, nine different games in tomorrow's paper. Yeah, and you guys stay up until they're done. You get your stories in. And... You're here until midnight or so, yeah, getting all that yeah, stuff Yeah, we've in. gotten yeah. a lot of good comments from you guys at home appreciating you, you getting it in like that and we've heard a lot we of positive it. things that's the thing they all of do. our guys on the sports staff they they love uh, high school football they love covering they have good relationships with the coaches in the community so it's something we enjoy doing and i, I hope it kind of shows you know when they pick up the saturday paper or go online and read it that we have uh, so much coverage yeah so you're going to want to do that uh, other teams Whose seasons are going really well? Any any teams to really look for? How the playoffs you mentioned are in a couple of weeks. Mm, we got we're a little more than halfway through the season, so, so we've got still kind of looking yeah, a little bit. We're still trying to determine. Uh, Bradley Central is really really good in six A. Baylor McCauley are both really really good. Any surprises? Um, kind of early to tell. Just you know, I always like the underdog. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's it's a Howard right now is doing really well. First first season under uh, John Starr, and he's already turning them around. You know, they they've equaled their win total of the last couple of years just in this year alone. And, it's a great uh, guy. A win tonight, and they could you know that catapult him possibly into the playoffs. So it's exciting. Uh, big things for Howard. Looking up for those guys. Um, you know, obviously we've got Marion County, who's gone to the last couple of state championships in two A. Uh, they look like a team that's primed it to do it again. Uh, a couple miles down the road from them, South Pitt looks like they're time for a run in 1A. Uh, so we've got some teams that I think we're going to we're going to see uh, well into um, October, November, uh, make playoff deep playoff runs when it's a lot colder than it is now, still playing. So what is this I hear about South Pitt's ship? Oh yeah, they. Uh, what is that? They, we'll have to go check that one out. They, Don't do they've that. got uh, 
some of the community supporters have built an actual pirate ship. Of course, that's their nickname, the Pirates, and they've built yeah. an actual pirate ship. Got the flag, the mast, the whole fire. thing, the players, fire, flames shoot up from it. Uh, they've got a, a, a very loud cannon whenever they make a big play or, or score a touchdown or after the win, whatever. They'll Fun. fire that thing off and it'll scare the bejesus mm -hmm. out of you. Perfect. Uh, the, the players walk across it and then that's how they kind of, um, you know, we intro should visit onto the them field. around so Halloween. It's, it's pretty cool. It is. It's, it's one of the better entrances for a high school team around here. Yeah, so we want to keep showing you all of that. And if you haven't, check in with us on Thursdays around noon. Because every Thursday we go live at one of the local high schools and talk to coaches, players. This time, uh, spirituals, dancing, Macaulay Baylor. Again, we have that for you on the website. But we're going to start getting these players to interact with us more. So you have any... They're shy. Yeah, they're That's a little shy. shy. Yeah, we're not. So, <laughs> but maybe we can start... Um, Throwing the ball around, going in the ship, doing Interact all that. Bit, yeah. yeah, so a fun, fun end to our conversation yeah, today. Yeah, we'll yeah, I hope you caught some of the beginning of that. Yeah, it's it's all good <laughs> here at the TFP. Fun Fridays. So TJF, have a great weekend. Whatever you're doing, if you're not at sports, then you jump over to the bridge for Wine Over Water or Three Sisters, Barry Quarter, our Entertainment Extraordinaire. We were on the bridge earlier today talking about all of that. There's something called Big Fish going on. There's so much to do. Sports. I don't know if anyone's ever used extraordinaire for Barry Quarter. Is that nice of me? That's, that's, that's yeah, I'll nice. have to come up with one for you. Nice. I'll be thinking about it. I have other <laughs> adjectives I use to, to refer to Barry, but just love we'll adjectives. Extraordinaire. You know, reporters. Yeah, come up with some good ones. Okay. This, this keeps on going, but uh, have a great weekend. There's so much fun to be had, and the weather's supposed to be amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. excited out, about get that. Get out and enjoy the fall. Yeah. Bye, you guys. See you later. I'll be back at 11.